if you haven't seen the boil water with water demo, you should go watch that first, because this video is just a really quick explanation for how to set up the experiment. You need a clear bottle that can support minus one atmosphere without collapsing, a tube at least 40 feet long that can support minus one atmosphere without collapsing, and a five gallon bucket to use as a base and to purge your hose of air bubbles, and enough fittings and sealant to put everything together. I originally wanted a garden hose, but for fear of it collapsing and sealing off, and because I like to be able to see where the water is in the clear pipe, I settled on this rather more industrial tubing. If you can't squeeze it shut with your fingers, it's probably strong enough. Unfortunately, at Home Depot, this stuff only came in 25 foot lengths, so I got a couple of these compression couplers to attach them with a pretty good seal. I was initially thinking of the slip fit plastic couplers, but for an extra couple bucks, I went with the brass fitting I trust completely once swaged down tightly. Of course, I say trust completely, and one of my fittings was not in fact tight enough, and halfway through filming, it started to leak. So because I didn't have a second wrench to tighten the thing, I just sort of smothered it in extra sealant and it pretty quickly stopped bubbling. The Nalgene cap, surprisingly enough, creates an excellent seal, which makes it really easy to refill the bottle, but you still need to connect the hose to it. So I drilled a hole through the cap and did an extremely terrible job of hand threading the hole by shoving the swage fitting through it with a wrench. Funny enough, that had some leaks. So I went with some rubber sealant. I don't know how important this actually would be, but after some Googling, I decided to not get silicone sealant because apparently when it cures, it can actually etch brass and degrade the seal. Once you have the apparatus built, you need to find a suitable location. Stairwells with big open insides were great. I just decided to film this particular stairway because it was open to the outside too, and that made it a bit easier to film. You also want to make sure you do this somewhere it's okay to spill a load of water. Inside on a tile floor would be a very bad idea. What I was expecting to be the most frustrating part of the experiment was purging the air out of the lines. But this actually turned out to be really easy because you can use the water pressure difference to make the lines empty themselves of air. Set up a siphon by filling the end of the tube with water, then quickly drape it over the wall of the bucket so the entire hose is below the water level in the bucket. All the water will flow out, carrying any air bubbles with it. Once all your air is gone, you can plug the end and return it to the bucket. Now, you have a closed loop of tubing that's completely full of water with no air bubbles, and that loop both begins and ends submerged in the bucket. Now just put the water bottle in, fill it up and screw on the cap underwater while everything is completely submerged. And just like that, you're ready to go. You've got a bottle that is completely purged of air bubbles connected to a hose that is completely purged of air bubbles. As a final note, you're probably gonna wanna tape the other end of the hose into the bucket because if it comes loose, then you get air up in the line and it's all, all kinds of frustratingness again. Walk up the stairs carrying the bottle and eventually you should see it start boiling. But the real question is, how far up do you need to go? For that, you need to know two things, the temperature of the water and the barometric pressure from your local weather report. Find the current pressure, normally reported in inches of mercury, and convert that to inches of water. It should be somewhere around 400. Next, look up the vapor pressure of water at your temperature. It'll probably be in PSI, Tor, or Pascals, but convert that to inches of water as well. Subtract the water vapor pressure column height from the barometric pressure water column height, and you should get the boiling height measured from the top of the surface of the water in the bucket. This height is what I had marked as the green arrow in my original video. The higher above this line you bring the water bottle, the more vigorously the water will boil. But you have to remember that that means the water in the hose is also going to be boiling. So if you are boiling the water in the hose and then there's expanding water vapor in the bottle itself, it's going to push those bubbles down the tube and you're going to get a mix of vapor and water in the tube itself. And that might cause problems for the experiment. So it's just something to keep in mind. It's also worth noting that unless you're using crazy pure water, you're going to get bubbles of other gases evaporating out of the water before the water itself begins to boil. 
If you want to clear these bubbles out, you can bring the water to just under its boiling point and then back down a few times to consolidate all of the other gas bubbles at the top of the bottle. Hope you have fun boiling room temperature water with more water. Thanks for watching. Oh, that's so weird. <laughs>